Thanks for joining me at 630. I'm Rick Marinon. We are continuing to interview the witnesses, survivors and first responders of the 9-11 attacks. Tomorrow marks 23 years since one of the darkest days in American history, the September 11, 2001 terror attacks. Tonight I'm speaking with North Tower survivor Eric Roningen, who was below the impact zone when American 11 hit the North Tower. Uh, it was it was it was a better than a normal day. It was a special day for me at 9 a.m. I was going to be made a Port Authority employee. First five years I'd been a consultant. So at 9 a.m. I was going to be an employee. So that was a wonderful day. And where I was, I was in the North Tower on the 71st floor on the south window. So I had a magnificent view of the of the New York Harbor. I had just finished preparing my notes, getting ready for my 9 a.m. meeting when out of the blue, it was as if a giant boxer stood up, gave a giant roundhouse swing at the north side of the tower. And that tower snapped and twisted south, sprang north and twisted south and then settled. And that magnificent, beautiful morning, crystal clear as it was, was, was no longer. Debris began pouring out of that upper tower and uh, the explosion was so loud, I just knew the tower was, was coming down. And, and if I'm going more in, into detail on the questions, let, just be, feel free to interrupt. Oh, no, uh, Rick. No, no, by all means, I was going to say, did you, did you even know a plane had hit or did you think it was 93 all over again? No, what happened was when that, when that, when that tower rocked south, and that explosion was so loud, there's just no way to describe it, that I, I thought I was going to be slingshot through the windows and fall about 800 feet down to the plaza level. But uh, I kicked back off of the convector and rolled out just outside my office. Because the roar was so loud, I bent over to protect myself, knowing that the tower was coming down. But uh, at the same time, I was horizontal. I said to myself, stand up and die like a man. So I stood up, the roar was coming to an end and I was still looking south and the fireballs were just whooshing, sizzling, burning down blue, uh, red, orange and yellow and exploded right outside of our windows. My first thought was that an airliner had somehow inexplicably drove into the top of those towers. What happened next for you? Were you ordered to evacuate? Did you look at everybody else and was just like, what was that? <laughs> well, um, they were, the uh, World Trade Center had just about, each floor was just about one acre in size. And from all around the floor, people were yelling to evacuate the towers because now debris was pouring out of the upper towers. And uh, and the fireballs, you could hear the fireballs exploding right after that that tremendous explosion. So uh, what I did is uh, I, I noticed my, that our, one of our consultants, Whitney, was bent over her laptop, standing facing north or facing east. And I went up to her. She was like frozen. And I said, Whitney, are you OK? And she said, yes, I'm just closing my laptop. Well, a year later, I discovered that she'd seen a body fall down outside her windows on the 71st floor, and that, that undid her. <clears throat> but uh, everyone everyone evacuated that tower very, very quickly. And uh, Whitney suggested, Eric, why don't we take a round of the floor to make sure everybody's out before we leave? So I said, good idea. And that's that's what we did. And because I had just finished a 20 ounce cup of coffee, <clears throat> I knew it was going to be a long day. So I asked her to meet me at the, one of the three stairwells and I took care of business, came back to my desk, retrieved a, a two year backup of the program we'd been working on. I had just backed it up the day before, put it in my little briefcase and uh, went out looking for her. And I didn't see her, so I popped into a stairwell to evacuate going down the towers. When did you, we have we have seen the video ourselves and, and others 
who, who we've interviewed as well have, have described what they thought were birds, but they were jumpers. Did you happen to see those jumpers out the window for yourself? Um, and when, when did that happen? Yes, I saw the jumpers. I saw the results of the jumpers and one jumper in particular. It took me about an hour to get down the stairwells, which were full of, full of, uh, aviation smoke, which you cannot breathe. And, uh, we didn't think we were going to make it down those stairs, but we did in slightly less than an hour. I got down to the mezzanine le level, broke through the line of security, went to the north side of the mezzanine <clears throat> and put my tip of my shoes right on the glass and looked out and the debris and carnage was just everywhere. Rick, there were bodies, and I looked down at the at the base of my feet, and just the other side of the window were a couple of bodies, pretzels laying there. I looked, and by now, I am so exhausted having climbed down over about 1,500 stairs. Then I walked over to the east side, overlooking the five-acre plaza and fountain, and it was the same same carnage. And as I'm looking out, a, a gentleman, horizontal, facing me, came falling down. And when we, we got to eye level, it was as if time had stopped. We looked each other in the eye. Time took over again. And it was the sound of a shotgun exploding. And there were um, fluids dripping off the window. I said to myself, I'm going to the South Tower to go down into the basements to help my friend Doug Karpiloff, who was the director of security at the time. He needs all the help he can get to uh, in, in, in the evacuation of the towers. So that's what I did. So you had no concern that these towers were going to collapse until they actually did? <laughs> no, no, those towers were built to, to withhold um, a, a seven, a seven oh seven at the time that they were, they were designed. Um, and when that seven fifty seven flew into the tower, it, it bent beyond design specs. Many of our engineers were amazed that the tower did not fall over, but but it did not. <clears throat> but as we were going down the stairs, we could hear water pipes snapping and walls snapping. And uh, so we knew something something was going on, but not in a, not in a hundred years did I or any of my colleagues at the time think that tower or those towers were going to collapse. When we come back, Aaron Eric Ronigen walks down dozens of flights of stairs to get out of the North Tower, only to have the South Tower nearly come down on top of him. Stay with us.